हेलो 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 हाय गाइस गुड मॉर्निंग सो फर्स्ट दिस क्वेश्चन इज इजी ए एफ बट टू थिंक ऑफ वट गुड बी अप्लाइड हेयर इज अ बिट ट्रिकी बट यू विल सी एग्जैक्टली हाउ टू थिंक दैट दैट थिंग इज गॉन बी अप्लाइड यू विल सी वट इज दैट थिंग बट या बिफोर दैट फर्दर लेट्स क्विकली चिम टू द क्वेश्चन इट सेल्फ इट सेट यू आर गिवेन लिस्ट ऑफ बॉम्स ओके फूल द रेंज ऑफ अ बॉम्ब इज डिफाइंड एज द एरिया वेयर इट एफेक्ट एंड इट कैन बी फिल्ड द एरिया इज इन द शेप ऑफ अ circle we will see exactly with the figures itself but right now let's see the essence of the question uh, the area is in the shape of a circle with the center at the location of the bomb so to trigger the bomb the bomb is at the location which is the center and its effect is in this entire area but to trigger the bomb you have to be at the center cool and uh, the bomb are represented as an index is zero index to two integer array where it is by xi comma yi and the radius which means its location and the impact it can have cool um x y y denote the coordinates and the uh, i bomb and the r is the range of the range cool you may choose to denote a single bomb detonate which means you, you you can choose to blast a single bomb uh, when a bomb is blast it will blast all bombs in that range which means if if this bomb is going to blast which means the bomb at this location it will blast all the bombs which are in this entire range right every bomb which comes in this entire range will be blasted because of this particular blue bomb now and as a suppose let's suppose this bomb again let's say it, it was inside this particular blast range right so it will get blasted now it will have let's say this blast range so again let's say another bomb is inside his blast range so it's kind of a ripple effect which will have on all the bombs that they will get blasted if they are in the range of each other cool uh, we are having the list of bombs and we need to return the maximum my word maximum number of bombs that can be blasted you are allowed to blast only one bomb so basically i am allowed okay i have n bombs i can blast only one but i want to blast only that one which can blast maximum number of bombs cool let's look at the example firstly so firstly this green bomb is at this location this purple bomb is at this location right cool let's quickly change the color green bomb at this location purple bomb at this location when i blast the green bomb okay the green bomb will blast it and all the bombs in this range will also get blasted but there is no bomb in this range so only when i blast the green bomb only the green bomb will get blasted no else if i blast the purple bomb then it will just get blasted and all the bombs in this range and also you can see at the periphery there is a green bomb also so it will also get blasted because of this blast of purple bomb so it will also get blasted and that's the reason the impact of this purple bomb to blast is actually two that's the reason i wanted to blast that one bomb so i will blast this purple bomb which will ultimately also blast this green bomb and i will just just get the maximum blast as two why we need the maximum blast cool no worries uh, if in this case you know okay both the bombs are very separate so for sure if you blast this only only one blast if you blast this only one blast so for sure the maximum blast is only one blast in this case if i blast this bomb so you can see i have five bombs 1 2 3 it's 1 2 3 4 and 5 right index by 0 1 2 3 4 so firstly if i blast this bomb then what will happen is it will ultimately try to blast this bomb 1 and 2 but 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 as soon as the bomb 2 gets blasted it will try to blast the bomb 3 and as soon as the as soon as the bomb 3 get blasted it will try to blast the bomb 4 so because of 0 it blasted 1 and 2 because of 2 it blasted 3 because of 3 it blasted 4 that's the reason because of 0 everyone is ultimately getting blasted thus because of this all the bombs will, will get blasted and my answer will be 5 now um if we we'll go and look back and see uh firstly the constraints constraints are pretty low so n square n cube like this algorithms full for sure work so that's nice um uh, which means i can go via some brute force way because i know this bomb can maybe blast this 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 maybe because see, one bomb can blast any other bomb right here in this case you saw this bomb blasted this bomb and this bomb while this bomb internally blasted this bomb the bomb three blasted the bomb four so we know okay for sure we have to link because we can't go with the way okay how many bombs can be blasted by the bomb zero because it is only two but ultimately because of two also i have some other bombs which are being blasted so that is what i have need to consider 
सो इफ यू जस्ट गो बैक एंड लुक इट इज द सफिशियंट एग्जाम्पल टू एक्चुअली मेक यू थिंक दैट वॉट गॉन बी अप्लाइड आई एज यू सो इफ यू सो दिस पिक्चर विच आई मेड I just okay because of this bomb zero bomb one and bomb two is what is getting blast bomb two because of the bomb three is getting blast because of bomb three bomb four is getting getting blast. It's ultimately I'm saying okay from zero I can blast one two from two I can blast from zero I can blast one two from two I can blast three from three I can blast four. blasting is one thing and i also say the same thing as okay from 0 i can reach to 1 and 2 from 2 i can reach to 3 from 3 i can reach to 4 from 0 because of this path kind of stuff i am able to reach all the bombs all the nodes so it is in the wording itself while thinking we transform that question okay blasting the bomb okay reaching the bomb okay blasting the bomb okay reaching the bomb reaching the bomb reaching the node so transforming that english statement okay we got to know okay reaching the bomb reaching the node okay i have to reach from node 0 and i can just think of okay how many nodes i can reach and that is how we build the thing okay we can just build the edges and edges we can build in the graph so we can think of this problem as a graph that okay and by the picture itself while drawing the picture itself we should have been knowing okay ha huh, these look like in the edges dotted edges from one node to another node and another node how the edges are built when they can get blasted by each other so for sure of what i will do is i will have any bomb i will try to see okay what all bombs are reachable for bomb 0 bomb 1 and bomb 2 are reachable because it can just easily be get blasted from bomb 2 Bomb three was reachable and bomb three, bomb four was re re like reachable. Then from bombs, bomb, bomb, bomb zero, I will try to go at entire. Okay, how many bombs I can reach? How many nodes I can reach? And by this, I will just say okay because of bomb zero, one, two, three, four, five, five bombs can be blasted. That is simply how I just I just made this diagram. Made the edges and by the edges itself, I know okay. I can reach here, I can reach here, and I I I just want to know okay how many bombs I can reach, how many nodes I can reach, and that is how I will simply get my answer. Although I just entirely made this whole new diagram for you that okay from this blue bomb you can reach the green bomb because of this green bomb you can reach the pink bomb because of this blue bomb you 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 can reach the orange bomb and also the purple bomb. But you, you, but you cannot reach the pink bomb because of this blue bomb. So for sure, because of the because of this blue bomb, you can reach green and pink, uh, orange and purple. But not this dark pink and dark green. But because of this pink, you can reach the green bomb. So it is like kind of you are thinking of how many bombs you can reach. Reach is number of reach, reachable nodes from that particular node, and that is simply a graph traversal you can do. Now, okay. Aryan, uh, we know simply. Okay, we need to reach from. We need to make an edge from node one to node two, which means from bomb one to bomb two. But how to build an edge? How to know that? Okay, these two bombs are reachable. As simple as that. If there is bomb one location, it is bomb two location. Now I have the coordinates of bomb one. I have the coordinates of bomb two. I have also the coordinates of that bomb one uh, like radius. Okay, to know the impact. So if I just find the distance between my bomb one and bomb two. And it is this D, you see, it is this D. So it is if this D is is less than my whole radius R of this particular bomb. So for sure, this bomb will lie inside my whole range, because see, my range is this entire thing. When I say my range, my range is pink range. For pink, I am finding okay, what are bombs are in my range? So I will just try to find the distance. Okay, from this to this, it is a distance, and this distance is less than my radius. Which is my radius? My radius is large. My distance is less, which means the other bomb is in inside my area for sure. If this distance and it is simply uh, under root of x two minus x one the whole square plus y two minus y one the whole square, that distance if this is less than or equal to because why equal to because if it is on the periphery itself then we know okay we have to blast that we have to blast that right cool then I will just simply say okay if that distance is le like less than my radius for sure it is my in my range I will just blast it if it is not then okay I will not blast it it is it is not in my range which means if it is in my range I will make an edge from pink to 
blue bomb and that is how you will simply make an edge you know after making an edge you have to simply do a uh, find okay what is the maximum reachable nodes from every node because you want to choose the bomb you want to blast and you can only blast one bomb so you will try okay shall i blast this bomb 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 and so on and so forth now by simply saying this you will just simply traverse the entire graph do a simple dfs travel cell you can also do a EFS traversal, see, it's up to you. When, when I say graph traversal, we have already seen in our graph series that we can do any traversals, either BFS or DFS. Simply find, okay, what all nodes are reachable from any node, starting from the node 0, node 1, node 2, node 3, node 4, node 5, and so on and so forth, and simply make a graph, and that is it. On a graph, do a simple traversal and just find, okay, what all nodes are reachable from every node. Simple DFS traversal, have a count of, okay, how many nodes are visited. And by that, you can just know how many nodes are reachable from every node. Simply, we will see the code very, very, very quickly. It's very easy. We sim simply firstly, okay, know that we have to make a graph and how we make a graph by HSSC list. Now, to make a graph, we know, okay, for every bomb, for every bomb, for every bomb, which means that B1, B2, B3, B4, I want to know, okay, if this bomb can blast this one, this one, this one or not, if this bomb can blast this one, this one, this one and so on. So I just have to go, okay, for the bomb B1, I have to see, okay, I can blast B2, B3, B4, I have to see, okay, I can blast them or not. So I will just check, okay, for bomb B1, what are the coordinates, which is X1, Y1 and R1. Then for that bomb B1, I will try to see, okay, what all bombs he can blast then i will just go on to every other bomb and just say okay for sure it will for sure always blast the itself but i don't want that so i will not i will have the condition okay i should not be equal to j but i will try to go to the other bomb bomb j and that bomb j so for sure i need i will have this bomb one i will have this bomb two so the distance is bomb one minus bomb two bomb two minus bomb one when I say I can have anything bomb 2 minus bomb 1 or bomb 1 minus bomb 2, it's just a ABS. So it is mod x2 minus x1 if you know x2 minus x1 whole square plus mod y2 minus y1 whole square. Under root is the actual distance. Right? Cool. Uh, then I will just simply have, okay, x1 minus that x2, x y1 minus that y2 and that is simply x. So I will just have x square plus y square simply and that should be e less than equal to my r square. Because I just wanted to have the condition, right? This distance, this d, it should be less than equal to r. So d square should also be less than equal to r square. Why d square? Because it is in the root. So you have to find ultimately the root. So why to find the root? You can all like you can always have a square of itself. So so that this root will get removed and you will get a d square. So simply get a d square. So it's a great question for maths plus graph. That's the reason. And these kind of questions, the, the, the combination kind of question, it's also in our 169 TSS series. That combination of question help because simply graph question everyone can do. But the combination actually help you think out of the box. And also thinking if this is a graph question or not. Cool. Uh, and then I will just know, okay, if this is in is if this distance is less than my R square, then for sure. If this distance the square is less than my R square, then for sure this. I can impact my J node, which means I have to make an edge from I to J. I make an edge from I to J and simply now my graph is simply made. Now I have to simply do a simple DFS traversal. I go on to every node to check, okay, which node has a maximum count it can impact, have a count which can impact, okay, how many nodes it can reach to. Then I will just simply visit it. I will just do a simple DFS traversal to find, okay, from this node I, what all the nodes which means the count of all the nodes that are reachable and ultimately when i do a dfs traversal i will just simply very simple very simple traversal firstly mark that node as true then increase the count because you have got a new node and then ultimately go on to all its neighbors and if the neighbor is already not visited just visit that neighbor via the dfs that is the simple line of code via dfs it's the reason i always recommend that if you want to do a simple graph traversal do always via dfs simple three four line code and you are done 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 legit done and then ultimately for every node you want to find okay what is maximum number of reachable nodes which means the maximum bombs you can blast and that is how you will simply tell the answer simply as you know it is o of n cube why because for every node every bomb you have made n square edges which means for this bomb 
you will go on to every other bomb which means this 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 but for this bomb itself you will have again n edges so for so entire number of edges are n square and for every bomb i have to traverse the entire graph again to go and find oh where is the bomb if, if it is there or not so for sure because of that reason for every node you have n square edges that's the reason you have to go on to every bomb and do a dfs traversal for this n bombs one dfs traversal will take n square time so for n bombs it will take n cube time that's the reason i have the n cube as time complexity and for sure it will work because n was 100 only and space was o of n square and that is all right because simply for graph making you have n square edges so for sure you will have a graph of n square size and a recursive stack of o of n but it will be o of n square plus n but n is very small in, in terms of o of n square so it is just o of n square and that is how you will just solve this answer i hope that you guys got the proper intuition of how the graph is being applied here and how it's a good question of a simple maths and a graph so i hope that you guys like this so,